What's up everybody? This is the Hedge Mage and welcome back to a, another video. So today or as of recording right now it is May 13th and we have just had today a banned and restricted announcement for Wizards of the Coast. And I gotta be honest with you, I was not really expecting to see any bans for Popper, but we got two bans today which really caught me off guard was a huge surprise to me so we are gonna get into that today uh it's gonna be a little episode of human reads article and talks about it but before we get any further my friends if you would like to support the channel if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe i would greatly appreciate the support all right so we have our banned and restricted announcement so the first thing that we're getting into here is basically in all competitive formats well for the most part legacy vintage and popper anything that has a sticker or attraction has now been banned now popper didn't really see a lot of stickers being used mainly it was the uh blank goblin or the also known as just the sticker goblin that got banned and that was really only used in a couple fringe decks so it really wasn't i don't think that oppressive it was pretty busted when people did pull off that you know turn one sticker goblin into uh I think it was like Trailblazer's Torch and they could get in the, gain the initiative on turn one. And at that point, it was really easy for them to maintain the initiative. So that was kind of, that was pretty messed up, honestly. And just the initiative has so much value with it. You can just kind of run away with the game if you get that, especially on turn one. There's no reason why anyone should have the initiative on turn one, in my opinion. So actually pretty happy to see the sticker goblin go. I just didn't really feel like stickers really had a place in eternal formats. That's kind of my opinion. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so Sticker Goblin is gone. But the other big band that we're going to be talking about is All That Glitters is now banned from the format. This has definitely been a very format warping card. And we also have an entire article uh, that we're going to check out here by, uh, let's see, by Gavin Verhey, who is one of the uh, members of the Popper panel. They kind of... They kind of monitor the format and kind of make banned decisions from time to time. So, yeah, we're going to get into the article and see what Gavin has to say. All right. So, hello, everybody. This is Principal Magic Designer Gavin Verhe and member of the Popper Format Panel, which is the group that monitors Popper and its ban list. As a group of six individuals from around the world, we are always talking Popper, crunching data, and deciding whether to change anything in the format. Yep, so kind of what we just talked about. All right, and I'll get straight to today's change, then cut into why we made this change. All that glitters is now banned in Popper. This change is effective immediately for Tabletop and later today on Magic Online, if not already. So this is kind of a huge ban. I mean, this card, when it got downshifted, I think it was about a year ago, it has kind of just warped the format and is can be... Like, can't be easy to deal with, but it really kind of makes you up just hold, just makes you hold up removal and sort of play a lot slower than you would probably normally play when you're in that matchup, which definitely really has changed the game considerably since it came out. All right. So why this card? Why only this card? Let me walk you through everything. All right, Gavin, I am all ears. We'll begin by looking at our last announcement. When we last had a ban and restricted back in December, we banned Monastery Swift Spear is a knock against the Red Dick. That downshift from Double Masters 2022 slowly crept up over the course of a year to eventually make a Red Deck that was not necessarily too strong, but far too polar. We banned Swift Spear in the hope of bringing that a bit back in line at the time we said this of all the glitters. Affinity has been playable in Popper for a very long time. It's been resilient to bands like Atog and picked up new toys along the way. Most recently, All the Glitters gave the deck a whole new spin with a white-blue version that can slap it on an Ornithopter or Ginger Brute and hit hard out of nowhere. Additionally, there are a lot of sideboard options available when it comes to ways that both fight artifacts or even just kill creatures. 
that are holy and all that glitters. If red is a little weakened, that should open up some sideboard slots to help against affinity. Even just for more removal spells that hit creatures can go a long way toward fighting this build. Ultimately, we decided to hold on to affinity for now, see what happens with this change to model red, and consider it more in a future update depending on what this does. So yeah, this is kind of basically what happened. So yeah, we had the blue-white affinity deck that came out when all the glitters was first downshifted, but since then, you have now basically, there's almost, I would say, four iterations of all the glitters piles, and all of them do pretty well. Some are less popular than others. Definitely, you see Jeskai, Boros, and uh, Azorius the most, but you can also see Orzhov list as well. It's kind of just become one of those things where it's, if it's any kind of a uh, Affinity pile that has white and plays all the glitters can kind of win out of nowhere and it can be Though it's not like a lot to deal with. I mean, there's a lot of enchantment removal and just creature removal out there But still it's it's just one of those things where you really have to constantly play around it for like the entire game Which really makes you slow play and maybe not I don't make some of the best decisions in terms of your own game plan because you're constantly worried about just losing when they top deck and all the glitters. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's really gotten a bit to be a bit too much lately. Well, welcome to that future update. <laughs> all right, in in the time since this last ban, all that glitters has moved from being solely a white blue affinity to appearing in other builds such as blue red white affinity, and then making the leap outside affinity, appearing in even red white synthesizer decks. And saying this is outside of affinity, I mean Boros synthesizer was. For the most part, an affinity deck, though it didn't run any affinity cards, but it was very heavy on artifacts. Definitely used a lot of artifact lands with things like makeshift munitions to sort of kill off your opponent in like the mid to late game. Uh, so it was definitely, I would almost consider it Boros Affinity, though it well, is just more popularly known as Boros Synthesizer. Uh, it turns out that slapping one of these on a glint hawk and attacking for and attacking in for eight damage out of nowhere is good enough when the games go long it's possible to kill out of nowhere with a double all that glitters turn in addition of novice inspector to the format leads it being very easily to build up early artifact count on the pack of eight inspectors in the deck and yes eight inspectors whether you're playing affinity or affinity or not is definitely a really really powerful right now just like all the value you get out of clue tokens you can sack them to things like deadly disputes demand answers or just use them to draw cards or you can just up your affinity count with them so yeah the eight inspectors have really really added a lot to the all the glitters piles all that glitters is a card that makes it so you never want to tap out if you don't have answers early you can die incredibly easily yet you still have to be worried about it late in the game. The play pattern is just not very enjoyable. It both speeds up Popper, something we've been trying to push back against and cr and creates polarizing games. And I would completely agree with this here, is that you really can't tap out against all the glitters. Unless, of course, you're tapping out to play a Dust to Dust or a similar card to deal with whatever is on the board at that time, taking away maybe their only way to create white mana, for example, is probably something you would want to tap out to do. Uh, or just killing the thing that has all the glitters on it, right? So... Yeah, you can't tap out. You constantly have to have removal. You really have to worry pretty much all the time about what that player is doing. So it is really not fun. I don't, I never really enjoyed playing against it, though I've always been able to deal with it pretty well. It's, but it's definitely really changes the play experience of the format quite a bit. How are the decks with it doing? Well, they've had a lot of success. In addition to many top challenge finishes and omnipresence in leagues, the win rates are good. The red-white synthesizer deck with all the glitters has positive match win rates against Mono Red, Terror, and Affinity, three of the biggest decks in the format. It does falter some against decks like Black Green Gardens, which has tons of removal and can accrue more advantage over times. 
but that polarity and ability to kill from nowhere still exists. It's also the kind of card that creates a high impact on the format even when it's not involved in the matchup. The kinds of viable decks all have to measure up to defeating a polarizing card like all the glitters and that impact can greatly reduce the number of options in the format. Yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of it right there is that you basically have to have more more answers to things like artifacts in your sideboard and so you're probably running at least three to four things and with all the glitters gone i i mean you still are gonna have to worry about affinity i mean grixis is still out there it's still a pretty strong deck uh so you definitely gonna want to keep your dust to dust in the sideboard but maybe you're not gonna you're not going to need to go up to four now or even more since, you know, all the glitters can be a really bad matchup for a lot of decks just because of how much power they can get on the board so quickly and just run you over, especially with all the evasion they have through own ornithopters and ginger brutes. All right. We did look at alternatives. The other primary option that came up many times were the artifact lands. Many cards sit on the banned list for the price of keeping the artifact lands legal. A Tog, Disciple of the Vault, and Sojourner's Companion have all paid the price in the past few years. So we looked at the Modern Horizons 2 bridges again. However, what we found as we built up our own list and tried them without is that it was not nearly as big of a hit as you might expect. The problematic white-blue affinity deck thrived on the back of mostly using original untapped Mirrodin artifact lands, and while the three-color affinity decks play some bridges, they still have room for additional ones and their actual artifact land count would not be reduced by much. The red-white synthesizer decks do play Rustvale Bridge, but still usually have three to four copies each of Ancient Den and Great Furnace, so while it does hit these decks slightly, for such a huge ban event to get rid of the bridges, it wouldn't do as much as you might imagine. The decks would have a little worse mana, and it would remove some of their resilience by making artifact removal like Ancient Grudge stronger, but those decks would have a high art would still have a high artifact land density. We then, of course, did talk about getting rid of the Mirrodin artifact lands instead of or in addition to the bridges. However, whenever we talk about these lands, our view is that they're something popper players enjoy as a staple of the format. A lot goes with them if they go away. We'd love to hear any feedback this from you all, so please send it our way. And I kind of agree with that. I mean, getting rid of the artifact lands would not just nerf you know, all, uh, all the Glitters decks, it would nerf basically Affinity as a whole. I mean, Affinity wouldn't probably entirely disappear because there's a lot of ways to basically create lots of artifact tokens and really up your artifact count with all the different permanents that also create artifact tokens like, you know, Voldaren Epicures, your uh, Inspectors, Blood Fountains, etc. All these cards can get a lot of artifacts on onto the battlefield for you. So I don't know if Affinity would entirely disappear, but it would, I think, become much more fringe. Not to mention, you also have the Bridges decks that uses things like... Um, Cleansing, they use things like a cleansing wildfire as a way to create lots of value, and it would also kind of nerf those decks. Like, um, Jeskai Bridges would pretty much dis. I don't know if it would completely disappear, it would probably change quite a bit. Uh, and I think that that would not really go over well with the popper community as a whole. So I think it's a good decision that they didn't ban any of the bridges and any of the artifact lands because one of kind of the cool things about popper as a format is that you get to play with the artifact lands. You can play affinity in in this format like like you did back when the Mirrodin block first came out. So that is really fun and really cool. So I'm glad they went with this and decided to keep the artifact lands. So of those paths, banning all the glitters became clear, and from there we began looking at what we should ban or unban. Anything else? The other pr primary place to consider knocking a card from was a model red, still boasting a strong, though not out-of-bounds, win rate and creating a lot of polarity. 
Mono Red continues to be a staple of the format, though weaker without Swift Spear, and mostly moving away from the four ofs in both Reckless Impulse and Ren's Resolves list. Mono Red picked up Goblin Tomb Raider in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan and Reckless Lackey in Outlaws of Thunder Junction, which has certainly given it some strong replacement tools. And yeah, I do think Mono Red or Kadaltha Red is definitely something they need to be keeping an eye on. I really think right now we... We do have things like Dragon's Breath uh, in the format that can really sweep their board very well, but we do, I think, are in the need of some more board wipes at instant speed that can deal with toughness to creatures. We're very good at dealing with the Bushwhackers and all the Goblin tokens right now in a lot of different ways at instant speed. Uh, and obviously there are, you know, some more modal ways modal board wipes in the forms of crypt rats and pestilence out there but outside of red we don't really have any board wipes that we can do consistently at instant speed for toughness two creatures a lot of there is toughness one stuff uh you know like suffocating fumes and cards like that but i think to really keep mono red in check at this point we do need some new board wipes in the format that we can play at instant speed because once you once they swing at you for 8 or 10 damage you just die to a couple well placed bolts and you know maybe a fire blast or something so even if you were able to board wipe them after the fact you still might be dead so that is def definitely something they should be keeping an eye on at least in my opinion what in red do you hit if you hit a card? Koldatha Rebirth and Goblin Bushwhacker make for a blisteringly fast kill for hand combination that deck, turning 3 mana into 8 attacking power in a single turn. There's also Galvanic Blast for something more direct that if you hit here would impact many decks, Synthesizer, Mono Red, and so many, some affinity lists alike. Some polarity that the format had made cards that were good against red, often not good against all the glitters decks, and vice versa. Despite both being aggressive decks, spot removal helps prevent dying to all the glitters, but is far less helpful against a token army from red. Where you want a sweeper like Electricery, life gain can help buy time against red, but is less meaningful when there's an 8-8 eight, eight, Glinthog staring you down and so on. It's our hope that knocking all the glitters will help here some. Other than red and decks with all the glitters, no archetype boasted anything that has changed enough that we felt we, a need to act. Several other decks like Familiars, Caw Gate, Black Green Gardens, and so on all exist, are strong, and are doing fine. Tolarian Terror decks, despite being popular and people asking for their banning do not carry a positive win rate so it didn't make sense to hit that deck at this time and yeah i i agree though Tolarian terror is a really really good card and i do play uh terror decks myself they do kind of fold sometimes to just well placed bajuka bogs and a lot and a lot of you know turn one spell bombs or uh re turn one spell bombs and relics of progenitus can really basically nerf nerf them on the after sideboarding so there's a lot of a lot of great ways to answer them and not to mention there are lots of other decks that play out of the graveyard so having graveyard hate in your sideboard is also going to help you out in other matchups besides just a single matchup whereas you know artifact hate is really only going to help you against affinity decks and with how good all the glitters was you it was kind of necessary to have as much artifact hate as you could bring in your sideboard against them so I I really don't think they need to ban anything in Tolarian Terror, and because I I honestly think they're fine. We also talked a lot about unbanning cards. The main discussed card, Prophetic Prism. We have been teetering back and forth on Prism as Popper has evolved a lot since its original ban. Back then, Tron was one of the top dogs, a whole different world. It has since picked up Energy Refractor and been totally fine. Yeah, honestly, I don't think Prophetic Prism would be that much of a problem right now. Uh, with just how much better a lot of the other decks have become, I think they I think they could handle Tron having Prophetic Prism. However, we didn't do it here for two main reasons. First, it's a card that also traditionally has seen play in Affinity and Red-White decks. Both decks were trying to weaken with this ban, and while I don't know whether they would play it, it seemed like an unnecessary risk. 
Second, by banning all the glitters, it does slow the format down some, potentially opening the window for a deck like Tron to reappear, and we wanted to see if that would happen before giving it another tool. We're going to hold on this one for now, but it has a decent likelihood of reappearing sooner rather than later. So I would personally love to see Tron come back. I really like Tron, uh, especially more of the combo versions like Alter Tron. It's just a, it's a style of deck that I really enjoy playing, but haven't really been doing that just because the format has gotten so fast that that deck dies to just really fast aggro pretty quickly, even well before it can even get set up. So... Yeah, I definitely would love to see uh, Tron come back, and I'm not sure if the all the glitters is go, going away is going to be enough. You still have the Koldatha decks to worry about, but definitely would love to see Tron make a comeback. Speaking of which, I want to talk about the next check in time and how it relates to today's banning. Modern Horizons 3 is coming up in just under a month. Traditionally, these sets add a lot of cards to Popper and predict this one will be no exception. I think that is a fair prediction. We want to be sure to get rid of all the glitters because no matter how you slice it, it polarizes the format and pushes things to be faster than is ideal. Red is still a hot topic of discussion as is unbanning Prism, but rather than change more things in the format before Modern Horizons 3 hits and Popper is shaking up even more, we wanted to hit the one we knew we need to and then check in shortly after the release. I'm going to be transparent here and provide a heads up that is a little unusual and this is Gavin talking as someone who has been able to look through the commons of Modern Horizons 3. The rest of the popper format panel doesn't see sets in advance. There is one common from Modern Horizon 3 that has a high likelihood of needing to be banned in popper as it is like a card we have banned in the past. That's totally fine, and as always, magic sets shouldn't revolve around Popper. They should do what each set Lee decides is the right choice for their set, and the Popper format will react accordingly. But result of this is that I expect we'll be checking in very soon after Modern Horizons 3 to make any format adjustments needed. It's worth seeing these things bear out in practice, but I expect to keep a short leash on anything problematic. We don't want you playing a format that is broken for weeks and weeks like when, for example, Chatterstorm was released last time. That is the point at which you can expect other potential actions taken on some of the things mentioned above if needed, but Modern Horizons sets have a long history of greatly impacting Popper, so we're going to wait on any further changes until then. Yeah, I'm glad they're going to let it play out. We definitely don't need another Chatterstorm. I mean, Storm is just so busted in the format because it is so easy to just create either a very high Storm count or even an infinite Storm count. So something like Chatterstorm is just absolutely busted. So hopefully they're not bringing in, as much as I love Storm as a mechanic, hopefully they're not bringing in any new Storm cards, but I don't think that's what he's trying to say here, that... There's just a very powerful common coming out in Modern Horizons 3, but definitely looking forward to what exactly that's going to be. Finally, one last topic. As you may have heard announced for other formats, stickers and attractions will no longer be appearing in competitive play. We are applying this to Popper as well for the same reasons. In Popper, uh, Sticker Goblin, or underscore Goblin, is is the primary card for which this matters, given that the majority of Popper is played on Magic Online, where only sticker, where the only sticker card is Blank Goblin, and there aren't enough common attractions to use in a Popper deck. The outcome for most play, the outcome for most players here is that Sticker Goblin will be leaving the format. When the play design team asked me how I feel about this change from a Popper perspective, I gave a pretty strong vote of approval. While I commend the Magic Online team's efforts, stickers have created a slight fracturing in the format where paper and, and online are not identical. And yeah, that's the kind of thing is that they basically had to find a way to make stickers work on Magic Online. And I think that's just the sign of just a crappy mechanic or a very not well thought of mechanic. Just, just from a design perspective, I mean, if... The way you play this game is both on like kind of an online simulation as well as in paper. Though there's 
and when it comes to the design and things that are allowed into eternal formats you should be able to play the card the same way in both paper and online so the fact that they had to make adjustments to it to make it work in an online format is just a sign that it probably shouldn't have been available for uh, eternal formats anyways so Sticker Goblin has been tough to get to work the same way in both paper and digital as I've called out in previous updates and in general a randomly determined additional ritual is not the kind of card that tends to contribute to the health of Popper when it shows up. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Card was dumb. There are some other paper only decks such as Sticker Stompy and that this will impact while and while fans of those decks may be sad I Appreciate that this removes the gap between both digital and paper for the health of Popper. Okay, that's everything for today. I expect I'll speak with you all again within a few weeks after Modern Horizons 3 release, either to make any adjustments or if things do in fact look alright to update you on what we're thinking. In the meantime, please let those of us on the Popper format panel know your thoughts, especially on the artifact lands, as it's a much discussed topic. We'd love to hear from you. On behalf of the entire Popper format panel, this is Gavin signing off for today. All right, and that's the article. Definitely, I think he's made some really good points. Um, really surprised that all the glitters has lasted this long, though with my own sort of pessimistic attitude for how often Wizards does do any bannings, I really wasn't expecting all the glitters to be banned. And the last thing I expected was Sticker Goblin to be banned, is I just... It wasn't really in a deck that was doing so incredibly well that it was completely warping the format. Just kind of had some opinions on st on just stickers. I didn't really like them. Didn't like them there. Didn't really feel like there was a reason why you could possibly just get the initiative on turn one. Just that was kind of kind of dumb and kind of silly to me. And I yeah did didn't appreciate it. Anyhow, that's gonna do it from. For me today, uh, would love to hear your thoughts, though, about these bannings, both on Sticker Goblin and All That Glitters, so let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think these bans were misplaced, or do you agree completely with what has happened? Love to hear your thoughts on that. As always, I hope you all are having a wonderful day, and I will see you all next time.